So I've harvested my lettuce and I washed it. It's all ready, and I just got it out of the uh, of the of the fridge. And now I have my several several pieces of lettuce here. I will tear them up and get them ready. But uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and and make my own salad dressing because I was out in my backyard and I have a few strawberries starting to come on. Yay! And, and I don't need very many strawberries for a small batch of salad dressing. So uh, we're going to do a really fancy salad. You can just use lettuce and some store-bought dressing or whatever you like. That is fine. But I grow an edible garden for a reason because I like to go around and I like to have yard food. And so this is going to be a yard salad with 13 ingredients. All pretty common in my yard. Stuff I don't really have to work too hard to, to do. Actually, the hardest thing was uh, was growing this lettuce. So I went out and, and picked most everything from my yard. I, I supplemented a little from the fridge and uh, just some, some simple stuff to make a, a delicious dressing. So we're going to start first with the dressing, get it going so it gets some flavor. And, and I want to show you uh, a great trick. Uh, it, and anybody, any age can do this. Uh, if you have a spoon and if you have one of those little serrated and... Um, um, Grapefruit spoons, uh, that would be great, but a regular spoon will do. And you can just use the spoon, just kind of dig out to dig out that core. See how I did that? Just comes right out. It's awesome. So anybody, any age, can do this. Let's see if I can figure out how to how to show you how this how this works. Here we go. Now, uh, I just scoop it out. Voila. So I, I have three strawberries that I'm going to use, and because I want to mash them, I don't have to use a sharp knife or anything, and I don't have to uh, have it be pretty. I can use a, a just a regular old butter knife, cut them into some chunks, got them all, and then I'm going to scrape them into uh, a, uh, a shallow dish here, and then I'm going to mash them. So there we are with that. I've got this this uh, just a regular just a regular fork, and I'm going to mash these up until they're they're just smashed up and good and ready, kind of like a puree. Now, if you had if you had some power tools like a blender or a food processor, and if you were making a bigger batch, you might want to do that. But you know. It's great to get everybody involved in the in this, and a, chunks of strawberry in my salad will be excellent. So while I've been talking, I've just been carefully mashing. I almost thought it was going to take me too long, and that I should turn the camera off, but I just kept kept at it. And the more I went at it, the smaller it became, and the more mashed it became, and the easier it became to mash. Voila, that is nice and chunky. Oops, missed a couple pieces. That's nice and chunky, but nice, but mashed enough for a salad dressing. Now, uh, there, there are some key elements to any salad dressing if you're going to make it, make it at home. So there are just five things in a basic salad dressing. And uh, this is a fruit dressing, obviously. So we're going to have oil, some kind of vegetable oil. Some kind of acid, like lemon juice, or vinegar, or lime juice, or even even um, orange juice or grapefruit juice would be fine. Some kind of nice acid, some tartness, uh, a little touch of salt, some sweetener to kind of cut that the the tartness of the acid, and then because we're doing a fruit uh, dressing, a fruit vinaigrette, we're gonna have some mashed fruit. We have strawberries. You could use any ripe fruit or frozen fruit, I think. You can try it. All right, so we want to put a little bit of sugar. Uh, I'm just going to use half a spoonful. Maybe not even that. Oh, yeah, about that. 
just like I would over maybe some cereal or such, I'm going to go ahead and mix that up and let the, the sugar start to dissolve. In the meantime, I have a small jar with a tight lid. This happens to be a canning jar, but any jar that you have, that uh, glass is going to be easiest to clean uh, with a tight fitting lid because we're going to shake this thing. That's how we're going we're, we're to make our salad dressing. Now, uh, the typical proportions for dressing is two to one oil to acid. So I am going to, I've got a, a tablespoon of, of lemon juice over there. I've decided lemon juice is, the, is what I want because, uh, well, strawberries and lemon, it's like strawberry lemonade, you know. So two tablespoons of just a, any, any kind of vegetable oil that you like uh, that, that doesn't have too strong a flavor because you really want the... Uh, the lemon and the uh, strawberry to shine through. This is another tablespoon of lemon juice I squeezed from this lemon. And uh, I just squeezed it out. I'll give it a little bit more uh, and made sure I uh, didn't include any of the seeds. Now we'll want a little bit of, of salt. This is, I, I love this. It's a uh, eighth teaspoon. And I'm going to do about half of an eighth of a teaspoon. It's not a very big, I don't want it to be too, well, not even that. Just a touch of that. Now, I've got my strawberries and sugar. I will just pour those right in. And that is it. We are almost done. The dressing is almost ready. So easy, right? Anybody could work on this and help with this. All right. Now. Even though I know this is a, a, a really good lid and that it's, it's meant to hold things in and not leak, I always put a hand on the top of the jar just in case. In fact, I often just shake it with the top. So I've, you can shake this for as long as you want. Be careful as you shake. But suddenly we're, we're starting to get a nice salad dressing there. I am gonna let, going to let that sit for a little while while I get my ingredients together. Now this is a 13 ingredient salad and I went out to the garden. Uh, you saw me harvest my lettuce and you saw me clean it and spin it dry. Now I am going to take those those leaves and just tear them up and these were the leaves that we left whole and they've been in the fridge for a couple days and they look great. Okay so I'm ready. No, no, no hindrance to meal preparation. And actually, all these little ingredients that I picked up, except for the carrot, uh, they required really nothing of me to get them ready. Uh, just a quick look to make sure I wasn't eating dirt or a, an insect. Now, this lettuce, remember, I, I washed it a couple of times to make sure I got everything off of it, and then I, I dried it up very nicely. And now I just want to put it into bite-sized bits. Uh, you know, you can, you can, uh, cut your lettuce as well. I, I've done that in restaurants. You can tear it. I, I don't really think there are rules. You could just leave it whole and use a knife to cut through it, whatever you like. So I, I want to introduce you to some of these ingredients. This one is probably the most familiar, uh, and it's one that I did not grow. Uh, I, I got it out of the fridge uh, and something I needed to use up. I wanted something with color, with some texture, with some sweetness. Uh, if I had uh, any anything that I could grate, like a, a bit of cabbage or um, uh, maybe even a root vegetable, that would be nice. Uh, carrots is what I had, so I'll have carrots. I have uh, some peas growing and I saw some tender pea blossoms, or pea tendrils, the shoots. Uh, before they make the flower. So I, 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 I pinched off one of these. You can find these in early in spring at the farmer's market. They, they taste crunchy and sweet like peas. Speaking of peas, look at this. My sugar snap peas are starting to come on. So these are delicious. They're, they're called a sugar ann. They're a dwarf sugar snap pea. And that's the one you eat the whole thing. So, uh, 
I hold the plant and I pick this off. If I try to pull this uh, just without holding the plant, I will uh, pull that plant out of the ground. So I make sure I'm very careful to snap that off, holding with two hands. And then I take this top and, and just kind of snap it and then I pull off that, that string. Um, and then I can eat. Mm. This one has a string on the back side as well. But after you take that first bite, you can get to that second string. That's a second string. Now I have to be careful when I when I did this on Zoom, t talking and eating it was very dangerous. Sugar snap peas are a delight. They're delicious. We plant them early in the spring, and they're just starting to come on now. And it's in June, uh, and through early uh, July, we'll be eating uh, sugar snap peas. So I'm gonna add some of those to my salad. I wanted to add a little surprising leaf, so I, I found my mint is looking delicious. And it smells so fresh and good, and it, it makes me feel relaxed. So I, I thinly sliced it. I think that's called a chiffonade. And I'll show you how I did that. I found another flavorful le leaf that's not lettuce, and this is called pineapple sage. Here, I'll hold it this way so you can see it. It hasn't made its flowers yet, but later in the season I'll be eating the flowers. This has a real uh, pineapple-y smell and flavor. Um, it's great for muddling in cocktails and adding to fruit salad. And I thought maybe I would add it to our garden salad. So that's what the leaf looks like. Mm. Oh, it smells, it's, <laughs> it really smells good. Um, I have two leaves and they, they easily curl up and make a little cylinder and then a very sharp knife and I just keep my fingers out of the way and I just can you see me yeah good and I just chop it up into fine pieces and I can put it in this little bowl here so that when I'm ready to assemble my salad so uh, there's one more leaf that I found that I love. It's called Silver Shield Sorrel. And uh, it is, is sour, like a sour apple plant. And most everybody, especially kids that I know, have always loved this. It's, it's tart, like a lemon, like a sour apple. It's going to add a great brightness and, and, and surprise uh, when I put that in my salad. I wanted to put some flowers also. This is my flowering broccoli. Yep, it's starting to put up its little run-ups, its little florets. They look like this. I'll put those in the salad too. So this is a purple sprouting broccoli. It grew last year and, and the, as soon as it started warming up this spring, it's starting to go off. And so I collect these little florets and I eat them in a variety of different ways. I can eat them raw. Mm. I will eat them raw. And these flowers, if I miss the florets, the flowers are the next thing. And they are sweet and broccoli-y. Mm, they're really good. Uh, pollinators love them and I love them. I'm going to put some of those in my salad. And this is a, a calendula. It is closed up because I, I picked it a little bit late this evening. Uh, it is closed up, but I will use the petals as uh, some uh, a, a garnish. So, oh, got a couple more things. 13 ingredients, that's a lot. Uh, these are pansies, little tiny pansies. And all pansies and violets are edible. They taste like wintergreen, and they're a great addition for edible flowers. I have some pumpkin seeds pepitos that I had in the fridge. I have a little Welsh onion. And I, you know, I, I think if I add this onion, the green part, it's going to be very strong. So uh, it is flowering right now. And these flowers, they are little nuggets of mild, sweet onion. Mm. Oh, yes. So I will, I, I will put that in my salad as well. And finally, I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm there. Number 13. These are garlic chives. 
they're flat instead of round and they're perennial and as their name indicates they look like a chive and act like a chive and they taste like a garlic so I, I'm going to add some of those as well so I will start with the garlic chives and I am going to just I'm just gonna break them off into you know inch long pieces and add them to the salad I'll stick with onion and I'll add a few of the onion little onion kernels break up the flowers and throw those in there the mint the chiffonade of mint oh yes when I did this uh, a couple days ago the mint was the highlight for me uh, this is the pineapple sage delicious I will add the pea sprout I, I have one mostly just to show you that you can eat this uh, uh, you would buy them in a bundle probably at the market I didn't want to sacrifice these uh, because I still want more peas we'll go ahead and add the carrots that's just one carrot that I grated I am going to break these up into inch or half inch to an inch chunks uh, I could cut them but what's the fun of that actually if if you've got lots of folks helping you make a salad it's great if you can do some things without with just these tools that way everybody can participate so I had I had about five or six of these and that is gonna add a lot of deliciousness to this salad can't wait to get to those and you can see I'm pulling the second string off of the back side as well as the front side all right uh, how about a few sorrel leaves well, just those are about about bite size that one's kind of big I'll tear it up we'll just put three or four even though they are delicious I I want to watch the number of these because they are high in oxalic acid so just a few and that's you know that was like three or four leaves I think that's that's good I will I've I, I want all of these and this top bit as well so I will take this top floret throw that in as well and all of these flowers can go in oh man this is looking good I am I will wait on the calendula and the pansies and the pepitos until after I toss it I'll use those a little bit as a garnish I think they'll get lost if I toss them around here all right well, let's taste this and see what it tastes like mm. I think that will do all right Now you could just pour this dressing right on your salad if you want. I like a big salad <laughs> and it's easier if it is dressed. I might use a lot of this dressing. It looks delicious. All right. Oh, I think that that looks great. Let's plate it up. Now this could be fun at home because you could have all of your different condiments, all of your ingredients out and people could decide what they wanted to do. And, and then they could, you could have a, a couple of, of big, big metal bowls and some tongs at the end and people could pick all their little thing, all their little ingredients like a salad bar and they could toss, everybody toss theirs individually. Oh man, look at that. Holy cow, that looks pretty good. All right, we will dress it with a few pansies and some confetti of calendula. Oh yeah, might as well just use it all. And, you know, sometimes just use the rest. What I want to do is just fish out some of these chunks just to along the top I want to get more of that strawberry flavor oh look at that 
Oh, that looks so delicious. 13 ingredients from my garden. Oh, and you know what I always say, you never, never trust a TV chef that doesn't eat their own cooking. I understand why they don't talk and eat though. That's a danger. All right, I wanted to get a little bit of everything, a big bunch of color. Mmm. 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 That is really good. You can get the crunch of the of the the snap peas and the the pumpkin seeds. I can taste a little hint of mint. That tartness of the lemon really comes through. And then just all these different different greens. There's there's just so many different flavors that are going on, and none of them bitter or bad. And I love that. Mmm. Mmm. All right. One more reason to grow an edible garden or an edible yard is to make a delicious yard salad and have yard food all year round. My name's Lisa. I'm a garden educator. Uh, this has been fun and delicious. I can't wait, actually. It needs a, just a pinch of salt, frankly. So, a little bit of salt. And I don't, and I think a little fresh pepper on this, just because that, that's something I like. Um, but try this out. Simple uh, fruit vinaigrette, uh, a mixed salad, and you can just, just have lettuce if you want, but if you've got a garden growing, here are some of the things you can use to make your own yard salad. But you can also find this stuff at the grocery store or wherever you get food um, and, and put together a fun mixed salad and especially with a fruit vinaigrette. Hey, right. well, that's about it for me. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my YouTube channel like this video, visit my Facebook page and my Instagram. I'm going to be making a garden all year and I'm going to be eating it. That's why I like to grow plants. So keep checking back. We're eating a garden. <laughs>